Uh, hey everyone, we are so excited to be part of the Hispanic Leadership Summit. And I have to say that there is nothing more powerful than being part of a girlfriend network. And, you know, we call it allies, but it is so much more powerful than being an ally. It is being part of a support system, being part of a pack, being part of a network where it's more than a support system. It is about having someone's back. It's about the you go girl. It's about lifting someone up. It's about knowing that no matter what, it's about a yes. It's about a hug. It's about this coziness and it's about love. And I have to say, it's about my girlfriend, Joanna. And it's also about my girlfriend, Claudia. And this is where true friendship grows. And I never thought that at the age of 60, I would be able to have girlfriends in my life that I would meet at this age that I would love at hello. And Joanna, I am just so excited to be here um, today with you talking about what true allies are all about. And, and that's you. So let's just talk about it. And let's talk about how we met yeah, and, and where that all came from. So where, where did we meet? How did yeah. it happen? And how are we here today? So, you know, what, what started out as I had received an invitation to this really interesting room in Can Lion. Um, you know, it was it was probably my third time at the show and at the festival as a as a creative leader. Um, but I received this magical invitation into something that I think we Latinas call comunidad, right? This community. Um, of incredible women. I remember stepping in uh, to the Martinez, into the suite, and feeling such a powerful draw to everybody who was there, inclusive of you, but with this vision that if we build the right networks, we can rise together. We don't have to do it alone. Um, and this was the first time in my entire career that I had ever experienced that kind of love, support, um, and focus on uh, doing good for each other. And so what started out as, a, I think, a conversation and can um, became, I think, has become just a, one of my best and dearest friends and friendship circles uh, that no matter what happens in my life, they are always there. No matter what happens, the ups and downs of careers, they are there. Even when we can't make it through a swim, they're there. Um, and so with all of that, we've had these shared experiences. But I think what is so key to everything is that you've built a community, Shelley. When I think about the FQ pack and so much of what you have taught us through your action um, has been the importance of community rather than competition, the importance of um, being linked rather than ranked. And I don't know that many of us are taught that in our early careers. We're so busy climbing the ranks of corporations rather than focusing on the links because it's the links that get us much further than the rank. Okay, so let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about comunidad. And, you know, you walked in that room and were we all the same? I mean, do we all come mm -hmm. from the same backgrounds? And, you know, here we are and we're going to talk about all different people, but we came together and we're now celebrating Hispanic community, right. Latinas. And, you know, I'm a white girl. You're Latina. Yeah. We are from different places, yet we talked about inclusivity and we came together one community. And so what did that feel like? And why did we all unite? We talk about competition, yet yeah. now we are one massive community of over 50,000 women from a hundred countries. And yet we are a cohesive group. So how did that happen? And why are we all supporting each other? And what is the power of allyship? I think the so let's the first question that you asked was what did I see when I walked in and I saw a tapestry um, of incredible women, um, you know, from African American to Afro Latinas to Latinas that you know like myself who you know I 
let's just be really clear. I walk through life with incredible privilege, Shelly, because of the color of my skin. And so not always, you don't always assume that I'm a Latina. It isn't until you've heard my story that I'm that kid from San Antonio, Texas, that couldn't have dreamed of walking into the Martinez and being accepted, right, for my intelligence and for what I could bring to that, um, to that community that you were building. And so when I, when I look back at every experience that I've ever had um, in corporate life since being a part of the pack, it has been one that has been both of support, but of celebration of where I come from, um, celebration of who I am, and actually consistently making me feel confident in my own skin. And I think that's at a time, and it, when we think back, because it's been 10 plus years. So at a time when I don't think that there was a ton of conversation going on about the importance of women in business, about what equality meant to companies' bottom lines. Um, and then the second part of that is the intersectionality of what it meant to be a, a woman and be a black woman or be a, a, a Latinx woman. You know, all of these, um, I'd say labels, kind of, it's not that they're dropped, they're celebrated. They're used as superpowers and strength within our community to build how we, um, how we, I think, come together to achieve ultimately, you know, equality within business. Um, but also achieving equality at home, right, in our communities. Um, at, because I think that we both agree that business problems and our society's problems are inherently linked. They can't be decoupled. And so that person that you want to bring to work or to the office and fully be yourself, right, has to have the same components and mechanisms that I think that often you have bought built and maybe sometimes we take for granted in this community. Yeah, no, it's so true. Oh, well, you know, I think let's talk about also the role that allies can play in supporting Latinas. Absolutely. So let me start with, um, you know, what does it mean to be an ally of a Latina? Um, first and foremost is, you know, just celebrating that we're here and we're at the table. I think first really acknowledging it um, and not asking us to be anything else but ourselves. Um, the, the other part of that is um, really looking at the areas of equity. Um, and I think sometimes we think about equity in a couple of different ways, but one of the most important ways is actually the bottom line of what you pay Latinas. And so as we think about equality and not just being able to rise in the ranks, it's not enough to rise in the ranks if we don't have equity and skin in the game, um, because we will continue, you know, I was kind of equated if you have a great title and a really bad paycheck, um, the two don't ever go together. Um, they, they're actually incongruent. So it is truly about thinking about equity in both that not everybody starts from the same place. I think that's a really important insight as being an ally. Most Latinas are not starting from the same place. Some of us have the privilege of that. Um, many of us don't. And then the second part of that is, you know, helping us find sponsors, right? Because allyship, it's not enough to be mentored. It's really important to be sponsored. And the sponsor is going to help you navigate, um, you know, I think the, the career path, but there's also the part of equity. How much equity should you expect when you're taking on a corporate position? Let's say you're starting a partnership or a small business. What is the division of equity within your partnership or business? And really getting down to the nuts and bolts of um, giving Latinas the confidence that they need to make the same decisions equally that their male or their female white counterparts. And what I will say is that I have learned so much about allyship from you. Um, you know, one of the things that I have loved about whether you know, uh, it was owning my own business or being at IBM or, you know, now today at Amazon uh, and also running Design by Us, I think one of the things that you have always offered me is candor, right? It is the candor of what are the barriers in front of us um, and then what is it that we need to collectively do um, so that we are far more linked and not in competition with each other in trying to achieve some of these equality goals? And I think that's really been uh, critical to, you know, both finding allies, but also finding, helping me find sponsorships along the way. 
um, in a way that has both progressed my career, um, but also if we think about it, is when you're progressing a Latina career, you're bringing the whole community with us. We travel in packs naturally. I always like to say we bring the pueblo with us so often we don't even realize it. Um, and so, so much of when you lift a Latina, you're lifting up our community simultaneously. Gosh, all I had to do was give you the microphone, girlfriend. <laughs> it was just about visibility. And I think that that's truly what an ally also is, is just amplification. And, you know, I just have to say, because you talked about swimming and, you know, this was just the greatest story, you know, when we were in Cannes and we all, the pack went on, you know, a boat in, in the sea, in the Mediterranean. And there we were out there in the sea and a bunch off of- the, Off the coast of the Black Sands of saint Tropez, <laughs> to be exact, but yes. <laughs> saint Tropez, we were all there in the sea. So you got a little rough and, you know, we were, we were out swimming and of course, you know, we all jumped in the water and we were having a little rough time and you, you were out there having a rough time. So of course you were out there, little rough sea. So I came to help you out and then I was having a rough time. So I was pulling you. Someone else came to pull me. Someone else came to pull the other person. Next thing you knew, when you talked about link, 50 of us were linked yeah. together, pulling each other because we were all going to save each other. And That's right. I think I just have this image when you talked about links. Yeah. We were 50 linked together, holding each other. And when you talked about the support system, when one woman rises, we all shine. That's right. And that to me is allyship. And, you know, it's just about giving each other, sharing the mic. And that is what it's all about. Sharing the mic, amplification, because we are all incredible. And then there comes Claudia Romo Edelman. Whoosh! Yeah, a force to be reckoned with in the greatest way. In the greatest way. Talk about visibility of Latinas. She shows up in Cannes and brings the Latina community one by one, showcasing all these incredible Latinas. And I remember this moment where she comes in and introduces the Latina community to the FQ community. And next thing you knew, you know, we were merged and right. we were one. And from that day on, there you have it. No going back. Absolutely not. And I think the diversity that she introduced to the pack, um, it was, you know, I think uh, it, it's bold. And so much of the work that she's doing, um, both at, uh, you know, we're all human, um, but also, I think one, one of the things that we're at, it's such an interesting inflection point in our history that Claudia absolutely gets, right? That we as a community are um, really dealing with our identity, probably for the first time in a, in a really candid way. What does it mean to be Latina, Latino, Latinx, right? Hispanic, any one of the categories of, of names that you prefer to identify yourself, right? How do you find that network um, to build your career and build uh, a network that it has longevity and that is there to support you? And I think that's what I really, truly love about Claudia, uh, you know, similar to meeting her at the, at the girls lounge and through TFQ, we recently had lunch together. It was like I had found a sister um, that I had long lost sister. And we were so focused in on the mission of raising the awareness of all the incredible Latinas that are in business today. I, I gotta give a shout out really clear because one of the conversations that we had was the importance of kind of taking a nod to the generation of Latinas that came before us. I am so incredibly fortunate that you know I come from a dynamo of a Latina named Margot Pena. Margot 
um, grew a 40 year architecture and construction business in San Antonio, Texas. And that was what I got to see every day. I got to see this brilliantly creative woman who is now in her seventies. She's going to kill me for saying that loud, oh, mom. Uh, but mom, love it. You're in your seventies hey, and you look fabulous um, because you're Latina <laughs> and Latinas don't crack either. <laughs> um, so one of the things that she taught me was not only to be a creator, right? And not only to build a business, which, you know, I watched her build a primarily female business in a male dominated industry, which was construction. And she built this business out of our garage while being a single mom to two kids. I was one of them. Um, and built it from doing residential work to commercial work, then to building for the United States government and, um, you know, things like bridges and buildings and military bases, you name it. So I had this amazing role model of both what it meant to be a woman in business and to bring other women around you. They were the designing women before the show came out. Um, and then the, the next part was, being able to see that there was a path to be creative um, and to intertwine that creativity in business together. And that's rare. Um, and then at least I thought it was rare until I met Claudia, because what I think Claudia is doing is exposing the many Margot Peñas that are out there building our communities. You know, here's somebody who is, you know, identifying whether they're, you know, uh, members of the SBA being identified or, you know, celebrated by our own presidents uh, around the importance of small business and our Latinas. And let's just be really clear. We have this really amazing superpower, not just in corporations to navigate corporate structures, but I think Claudia has capitalized on something that's really important, which is, around the importance of acknowledging all the small business owners that are all Latinas mm -hmm. and how they are so diverse, whether they are coming to us in the trades or in food um, or really reinventing the way that business is being done because we're in this interesting time. And I think we find this, Shelley, um, in both understanding what it means to be in that sandwich generation. Um, it, in the Latinx community, being in that sandwich generation not only means that you have to be this, you know, phenomenal business person, but you also have to be a mother to your children and uh, and uh, and now a caregiver to your parents simultaneously. And I think there are many, um, you know, I, I think there are many populations that are going through that. That's always been the way, our way of life. <laughs> um, so we've we've been in a perpetual sandwich generation from generation to generation. And so the importance of celebrating the women that we stand on their shoulders, my mother, Margot Pena, before her was Rose Pena, right? You go, okay, so I've gotten three generations of amazing women as, you know, as, uh, as visibility. What Claudia is doing is amplifying what those generations have done so that we can continue to build on their legacy because they have a very rich legacy behind it. And we're so good at it because we've been doing it for so long. Right. This new generation is just getting good at it. So we got a lot of experience as Latinas in doing it for quite some time. I also have to say just to wrap and to give some advice because we got to close this gap once yeah. and for all. And I think Latinas have a leg up. So they got the experience. They've been doing it for a long time. And as I always say, I hire for passion. I train for skill. Latinas got the passion. So mm -hmm. once again, they got the leg up. And so hire for passion, train for skill. Absolutely. In, in yeah. Spanish, Shelly, we call it ganas, right? The desire to succeed. It's the ganas to be something better than where we came from. And so it's using that ganas to succeed is so critical. And celebrating Ganas, right? Because Ganas is partly ambition. We shouldn't be ashamed of our ambition. We should celebrate it. Ah, own it. Yeah. Know your value, know, know your worth, ask for it. Why are we paid 54 cents on the dollar? That is ridiculous. No more. Ask for it. Know your value, know your worth, hire for passion, train for skill. Absolutely close the gaps. We need to close the gaps once and for all. And so these are the very important things. I also say, 
hire in threes at right. every level so that you are not the one and only because yeah. that's when we fall out. So these are really important things. And so for everybody, we are so excited to be here together with you. Joanna, I love you so much. I love, I love you, Shelly. Claudia, you know how much te amo. We love you. Um, te amo, Claudia. Thank you, everyone. Y a todos mis amigas y mis amigos y mis amigues. Gracias para todo. Gracias. Can I say it again, Joanna? Sure. Para mis amigas y mis amigos y mis amigues. Gracias, gracias para todo. I agree. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. I'm Shelly Zalas, CEO of the Female Quotient. And I'm Joanna Pena Bickley the head of research and design for Alexa devices at Amazon and the CEO of designedbyus.org.